guys, we are ending our Arizona trip uh, with incredible escape rooms. Uh, we're playing two games here, Spirit Trap and Toy Maker. They're at a uh, strip mall, like this uh, huge parking space right outside um, everywhere. So I don't think you have any issues with parking. If you want to see what that is all about and more content that we'll bring you to this channel, you better subscribe and like our videos. What's going on everybody? It's Brandon from Escape the Rumors. Last stop in the state of Arizona and we are at Incredible Escape Rooms and I'm with Robert. Robert, how are you? I'm doing good. Robert is one of the co-owners here. It's him and his son and uh, we're going to play two of their games, Spirit Trap and Toy Maker. Yep. Very excited to see what those two games are about. But before that, I need to have a conversation with Robert so we can learn more about Incredible. Um, first, I want to ask you, when did you guys open? Uh, we've been open for just about six months. Six? Oh, you're really new. Yeah, wow. yeah, we just opened this year, so. Okay, and you already have two games, that's... Yeah, yeah, and we're opening our third game up uh, with, should be by the end of the month. Right now we're training employees and stuff so we can get everything going with that. And uh, the last thing, all the puzzles are finished, but still working on the videos and clues and stuff to give people in game. And then, then, wow. we'll, then we'll be opening. What's so. the name of the third game? Uh, Runaway AI. Runaway AI. Yeah. Uh, I think we almost made it. We were able to play yeah. it. That's... Yeah, I, I thought I was hoping we'd get it done by now, but then we had issues with it took longer to get everybody hired and start training and all that stuff, and that was the main uh, hold up on it. So gotcha. Yeah. And how many games can you make at this location? So our original plan was to make five, um, which is what it shows out in our lobby mural. Um, but we decided that the back area where we were going to build two more. We're going to build a, a classic arcade back there and then just have like flat pricing. So it's like you go in, everything's on free play. You pay one fee, you go in and you can play all these like old 80s and 90s uh, arcade games and pinballs and stuff. We thought that would be kind of a cool thing to combine with escape rooms. Yeah. Um, the, the biggest uh, question mark right now is like how much soundproofing we're going to need to keep people from hearing when they're in the escape rooms. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So that's uh, but yeah, I thought, you know, I've seen like escape rooms with smash rooms or break rooms as they call right. them. I've seen it with like axe throwing different things. So I was like, well, what else could we do? That would be cool and kind of fit together. And I thought, I thought that would work really well, especially for like birthday parties and stuff. Like oh that. Yeah. yeah. So, so would that be like a flat rate for like on the hourly basis or a whole day? Yep, whole day. Whole day. So like, yeah. So we're going to have like a weekday, I mean, tentatively, obviously we're not going to do this till like early next year, but okay. we're probably looking at like doing uh, 15 bucks a person during weekdays. Um, and then on the weekends, because we're open for like 12 to 14 hours, it's going to be like 20 bucks a person, oh, which is still, that's totally worth yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause there's going to be like 50 different arcade, well, 40, 40 or so arcade machines, 40 to 50 plus uh, five to 10 pinball machines. We're going to start with, hopefully we can get some more later, but, wow. but yeah. So, I'm so you're going to have the whole works, ski ball, basketball, shooting? No, no just, just all the old arcade games, you know, like Pac-Man, Galaga, you know, stuff like that, uh, gotcha. Gorf, you know, all those kind of things. So uh, Gauntlet Legends, all those kind of things. So, uh, and then some of the classic pinballs and stuff too. So it should be pretty cool. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think. Um, out of the two games you have available right now, which seems to be more popular? Which is the one customers are coming to book more? I mean, they both do well, um, but people seem to be uh, more drawn to Spirit Trap. I think people like the, the kind of scary ideas a lot of people do, so, and actually, uh, right now, neither of the rooms are scary. Like, because mm -hmm. what we wanted to do was open things up to where, um, when we initially opened, that we could have it open to everybody. And some people, you know, they bring in their kids that are younger, and so they, they always, is it scary? I'm like, no, no, it's not scary. Yeah. Um, but what we're going to do after AI opens is we're going to go back. We actually have some custom stuff being made right now. Um, so we're going to have it'll be the same rooms but we're going to make two versions of each of the rooms so you can go through it non-scary or scary. Right. So like the non-scary version, the lights aren't flickering, we don't have jump scares, stuff, basically what it is right now. And then the other version is gonna have all those things. So that way people can choose which way they wanna play those two games um, and that way everybody gets what they like. That's so. cool. And no live actors for either? No, no, okay. we're not gonna have live actors. Um, we are gonna have, uh, 
I won't say anything more about it, but we are going to have a Pepper's Ghost illusion, if you know what that is. Uh, no. which It's basically something that was invented by some guy named Pepper back in the 1800s for live theater. And you use a reflection to make it look like there's a transparent figure, so it looks like a spirit or a ghost. Oh, um, okay. So they use it at um, Dis at Disney. At Disney, they use it too in the Haunted Mansion. Oh, right. And you see all the, the transparent. That's a reflection from the stuff that's actually above where you're at. That's and cool. And so we're gonna have the same kind of thing, and you'll see um, you'll see the spirit of one of the ghosts in the room. So that'll be pretty ah, cool. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I know you're busy with you know running the company and everything. Do you ever get a chance to game master? Like, are you watching players on the camera? Do you still do that, or is oh yeah, I, I do that all the time. Yeah, okay. like literally seven days a week right now. So um, yeah, I, I've been doing it uh, all the time. It's really it's really fun, and, and it's really you know I actually worked as a game master uh, for a year and a half at another company before I I started my own. Uh, ah. Kind of learning about the business and stuff and. Uh, and it was fun then, but it's even more fun when you're one of the people that created it. It, it right, adds, right. adds another element of fun to it. So yeah, it's cool. Do, do you recall any like funny story or like you know crazy story or something you've seen players do in the rooms that you um, share with us? There's some yeah, there's some funny things that happen. Uh, like one in particular that that kind of stuck out with me was it was this family together. It wasn't really something funny that they did. It was this 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 dad. He was getting mad every time they needed to ask for help. And the kids, he had two teenage kids and the mom was with them. And every time the kids were like, Dad, we need to get a clue. He's like, he keeps getting more and more mad every time they say it. But he's like, fine, you know. And so he kept doing that. And he was getting to the point where he was like stomping his feet like a kid almost. Yeah, like he, was yeah. just, he was so, you know, angry. Anytime well, was he, he even solving anything or he was yeah, just being stubborn? They did solve stuff. It's just he was getting stubborn. He didn't want to get clues, mm. right? And we actually have unlimited clues at our games. Um, so people can kind of um, choose, like, because we figure if somebody paid for the game, they should be able to choose how right. hard they want it to be. Some people come in and tell us, don't give us more than two clues no matter what. And right. I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, even if you guys say we changed our mind, they're like, no, it doesn't matter. I'm like, okay. You know, and we just, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they, they were going through it. And then finally, you know, so he was getting really mad and everything. But then at the end, when I came in, I was like, so what'd you guys think? And the dad was like, oh, it was awesome. I had so much fun. And I was like thinking to myself, dude, you know, I'm watching this whole thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, so, that's not what I saw, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny, so. But yeah, I mean, there are some things that happen every once in a while that are that are funny or weird, like, you know, people try and do strange things and you're like, why would you do that? But, yeah. you know, that's just, uh, everybody thinks differently. Plus, I think when people, if people are struggling, they start kind of going further and further in terms of, like, weird ideas that yep. they come up with. So, yeah, they just, you know. Okay. And then, um, do you get to play escape rooms, or do you play escape rooms? I do. I don't get to play them as much as I want to, especially right now. I mean, I'm, I'm here seven days a week, but yeah. I've played I've played games in like three different states, um, including obviously Arizona, um, Arizona, California, and Texas are the states I've been. Any you want to give a shout out to? It doesn't have to be a favorite. Just one that kind of was memorable for you. Um, well, honestly, I mean, so the first escape rooms I played were here, um, and then. I played this one in Texas, and I can't remember the name of the place, unfortunately. But I might be able to help you. What it was, was it about? It was in um, it was in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and they had like an Egyptian uh, tomb type of thing. I think it might have been supposed to be in a pyramid, and they had like sand on the floor and stuff. It was mm -hmm. it was inside of a uh, a business park, okay. but it was cool. Uh, like it was one of the like cooler set design type of things that I've seen and um, they had some some neat puzzles in it and stuff like that okay um, but yeah it was it was pretty neat um, there's one I really want to try here in Phoenix though and that's um, nemesis club I, yeah. I've been hearing nothing but like amazing stuff about them and I, I really want to go check that out so we, so just FYI we just played their two games and um, we can't pick which one we like more because we like both of them so much yeah they're different themed but uh, definitely worth Go check. Oh, yeah. Go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I will for sure. We actually had a family who was here over the weekend that had just done the robot one, the evil robot mm -hmm. one, and then they that was the first escape room they ever played. And I was like, and then they came here, and I was like, well, let's see how this goes. Because <laughs> I heard they were like like Pixar level type stuff, you know. So 
So they came in and they did it and they, they actually played this game and they said they really, really enjoyed it and they were going to come back. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, so, cool. cool. So I mean, the owner, is, uh, he's an enthusiast himself and he's yeah. definitely going to come visit you very soon and check out your games. Awesome, cool. Um, so last but not least, Robert, we want to get to know you a little bit better. What is something that most people don't know about you outside of escape rooms? Like you have a talent, or a hobby or something um, you want to share? I can sing. <laughs> you can sing. I had a okay. I had a scholarship for vocal performance when I was in school. So, yeah. so yeah. I'm like sing. sing like karaoke, sing or write your own stuff, sing like original music. So, so I mean, I I used to write music a long time ago. That's not what I got. My my scholarship though was just to for vocal performance. Um, so yeah, I can I, I used to I lived in the Philippines for a while too, and I used to sing karaoke there all the time because it's really popular. Like there's a karaoke on every corner. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Want to share anything? <laughs> <laughs> can we put me on the spot, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess I can do a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, you got a nice acoustics in here. Yeah, I got a nice. Adds a little reverb for me. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of what I'm going to sing. Uh, yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now I know that they are here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday, suddenly. Okay, that's enough. My voice is shaking. I'm a little nervous. I haven't performed in a long time. No, <laughs> you've got the pipes though, definitely. Yeah. I, used to, I used to always, uh, when I would sing in karaoke in public in the Philippines, I'd be drinking first, so that made it easier. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, it actually sounds better now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, Robert, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, we sure. haven't gotten into the rooms yet, but we're playing Spirit Trap and we're playing Toy Maker. Right. Which one's older, just FYI? Um, we opened Spirit, I'm oh, sorry, Toy Maker was the first game we opened, and then we opened this one uh, about two months later. So. Okay, well, check out our website, skipthroomers.com. You'll know what we thought of both rooms. And do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that like button below because we're giving you sneak peeks of the lobby area, parking situation, what to expect when you get over here to Incredible Escape Rooms. and. Uh, I'm gonna, well, we're already inside of Spirit Trap. Mm -hmm.